All right, today I'm going to show you how to build Betaflight target hex files with Docker. Okay, so before we go down this winding road, uh, it's not really that difficult, but it is getting into the programming side a little bit. So it's a little bit involved if you're not into that. I do have the Betaflight 4.0 build 1075 F3 board performance edition hex files published on my repo now as well. So we did those for 3.5 and now 4.0 build 1075. And in my previous video, I talked about why you might be interested in build 1075 because it has the full dynamic notch improvements. I, can t I plan to continue to, to publish the F3 performance edition targets unless somebody else starts to do it. It's not that difficult. It does take some time. I'm sure, you know, when I say I'll continue to do that, it's not going to be for like the next 10 years. So hence this video, teach a man to fish. If you can learn how to build and you can include whatever features you want in F3 boards as time goes on. And I'm sure F4 boards as time goes on as well, they'll start to run out of ROM space in probably a bunch of years. It will still take, but nevertheless, you can you know, add and remove features from any, any board target pretty easily. I do want to recognize there's multiple ways to build Betaflight. It's C code and, you know, any way to build C code can be used to build Betaflight, I'm, I'm presuming. I'm not a developer, but the most popular way is installing the Linux subsystem. I can't do that because I have a Windows 7 laptop. So I use Docker. Docker does work with Windows 7, Win 10, and Mac, so let's let's look at that. Before we go into that, I do want to give some recognition to the developers because I don't feel like sometimes they get the recognition, especially with this whole Helio butterfly thing. There's a lot of uh, just taking for granted what these guys do and and grabbing the, their hard work and product. So let's you know just quickly look at who the beta flight developers are so if i go into insights if you want to hit you know, contributors there and then you can see all the contributors to the beta flight open source project throughout its life uh, hydra is dominic one of the biggest contributors because he developed clean flight uh, back in the day and you can see that right here but if you you know narrow it down say well i'm not interested in, in you know past years and i want to just go to this year you can see mike keller e-tracer uh uh j fly per you know I you have all these call signs um, and you can click on their names and see who they are so you can see who the people are on Facebook we really need to appreciate these guys efforts because if they stop doing what they're doing our firmware stops uh, you know advancing and you know I'm gonna show you a couple things here and I don't want to be uh, recognized as some developer I'm not I these core guys really make make or break this open source project and you know, all the grabbing of their code and then saying how something else is better, that's, that really demotivates them. Some of them, not all of them, but some of them. And we need to watch out for that because if you demotivate these guys enough, everything's going to stop in development or slow down. So, you know, if, if you can, you know, do show some appreciation for their work. Uh, if you go on to the, the Betaflight official group here, you can see the admins. These are developers or, or uh, big contributors. This is eTracer, um, DieHertz, uh, Bruce uh, is on there, Dominic, uh, Curtis is uh, Kodak. So a number of the guys, here's Mike Keller, um, so on and so forth. A number of the guys are in here is Dominic. You know, I'm, you know, I'm missing people. So I'm sorry if you're a, a major contributor here. I can't cover everybody's name because there's so many people, which is the awesome part about Betaflight. But, you know, when you're seeing them online, um, just do recognize that and, and show them some props. So obviously the first thing we need to do to build with Docker is get Docker downloaded and installed. You go to docker.com, go to products, go to the desktop edition. Under here you can see it's for Mac or for Windows. Go ahead and download that. Go ahead and run the executable. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Once you try it, once you get it installed, go ahead and run the Docker quick start terminal. And that will start up basically a virtual PC or a virtual machine within your PC. With It does take a little bit of time. With my computer, it would error out initially. I had to go on to the CMOS and enable my uh, CPU to 
support virtual machines on the on the CPU. So or allow some allocation for that. I'll flash that pick up of that setting. Obviously, it's going to be different on your computer, probably, unless you have the exact same computer I do or an HP computer. But hopefully, it can give you some sort of guide yeah, if, if you do get an error message. Once you get everything working correctly, so installed and it, you know no error messages, go away, Windows. It uh, will come up and show this message for the Docker terminal service to work. From here is where you can enter the commands to run Docker and build, but actually I'm going to close this for now because I do it through a batch file, which is the process I'm going to show. I think it's a little easier than typing all the time. So I'm going to just go ahead and close that window. The reason I can do that is Docker stays running in the background. You'll see it when you go to shut down your computer. It will say, hey, there's this application that the virtual environment is still operating. It's supposed to, I think, lock out, so maybe mine's not working perfectly correctly, but uh, maybe in Win 10 it maybe would, or, or Apple. So in those environments, you may need to leave that Docker window up uh, to run through a batch file or whatnot. So just keep that variability in mind in looking at this, but for my PC and for what I'm gonna show here today, I can close that window and then I can just uh, enable building through a batch file and uh, and I have no issues. So the next application you're going to need is GitHub Desktop. And the developers are probably cringing, like, oh, you don't need that. Just typed into the command line. And they're right. You can, if you're very familiar with GitHub, this video is probably not for you to begin with. But if you're not in normal to building or not used to building, the uh, GitHub Desktop basically gives you a graphical user interface to clone repos and, and and see changes in the code, so on and so forth. So it's a handy tool. Download that, get that installed as well. The next step after that is making a decision on how you want to access the get the Betaflight project. Do you want to fork it, which is basically make a copy that you will then have to keep up to date, which I'll show you how to do, or do you just want to clone or copy? Basically cloning means just copying down to your local PC. That's what this clone slash download, that's why they're in the same the same button here, is it's just copying it down. It's just a GitHub bird is called clone. So do you want to just copy it down to your local PC and make the code edits? Or do you want to have a fork of it so that you can put, put your edits back in and kind of save them on the internet and then uh, you're not going to lose them? If you want the minimum amount of steps that you'll have to do to maintain the code, the best way is just to clone it down to your PC. So I'm going to show that first. So to clone it down, all you have to do is hit this copy link here. You should be able to hit this open in desktop, and then it should just open right in the GitHub desktop, but it doesn't work that well for me sometimes, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the copy link. I hit the button already, so I'm going to go up to the, I'm going to hit file up here. I'm going to hit clone repository. I'm going to click over to URL. I'm going to paste that link in here. Now, to do that, what we need is a directory on your C drive of where it's going to put that. If you look at the Docker instructions, they say that you really need to put it under your user folder. So, you know, C users, your user login. And then I made a get folder and then I put it under here. So we're just going to and, you know, put a spatch insert under there as for my, uh, my GitHub repo. So I can put it directly under here. So I could just type this. Uh, well, I already have one as beta flight. So I'll just type in. It says class. Hit clone. That will copy it down to your computer, and then at that point you can edit the the code direct. So let's go to that part. To edit the code, uh, you'd want to use some sort of text editing program. A very popular one is Atom. So you go to this link. Hit download Atom. Yeah, it works for Windows. Not sure about Mac, but you can figure out some sort of uh, Mac or drop a comment for a text editor for Mac. Get that installed as well. Okay, so now that I've made that repository on my local computer here, I can hit my drop down selector here to make that the current. So that's going to show up as Betaflight, Betaflight as a repository. Let's just browse over to our C drive here. So under my C drive, how that's going to show up as this directory. See, I made the directory called class, and then under here is the beta flight. It shows up as a repository name a little different because it's beta flight, beta flight. 
click on that. From that point, here is the master and all the branches. So they have a you know maintenance branch for 3.4. So essentially, when the master was at where they're publishing 3.5, for example, they made a branch, basically copied the code into a side branch, and then they maintain that. You know, like that's how they have two parallel tracks of you know a maintenance edition for 3.5, but then still progress the master on 4.0, so on and so forth. You would hit fetch just to make sure it has the, the latest and greatest. And at that point, you can hit repository and hit open in Atom. Atom should open and you can see class under there. And then now you're ready to start editing the source code. So I can go ahead and close the welcome in the GitHub for now. All the source code for the targets is down under main targets and you can see all the different beta flight targets and then you can see this uh, com pre h file so those are the files that we will be editing we're going to do that in the next video because it's involved in itself for now i'm going to jump back and talk about obviously in the clone method here when you want as there's changes made to the master or you know you could be clicking on any of these branches so let's talk about that for a second so the current code that's opened in Atom is based on which version you have selected in doc or uh, GitHub desktop here. So if I click on 3.5x maintenance, that's actually switching the code right now that Atom has opened to be the 3.5 maintenance branch. So now if I go into here, this code has changed. It didn't, you don't see anything on, well you would if you ha, if they're looking at a file that has changes between the two, but it's now the 3.5 branch, and that's what we would build as well. So this is important to recognize because based on what branch you have selected here, whether you have forked it and have your, you know, your forked repository cloned to your PC or you're cloning the Betaflight Project Direct, whatever branch you have selected here, master or any of the branches, that's what it's going to build when you refer to that directory, the, basically the directory where the, the files are stored. It switches them out, um, you know, based on this drop-down selector. So you got to kind of pay attention to that. If you want to build a 3.5 branch, then you'd have to have 3.5 selected here. Say I wanted to build a 3.3 uh, branch, I'd have to select 3.3 right there as well. So you can go back in time and you can see it's now switching the, you know, uh, switching the branch to that version, which is switching the files again in this directory for this example for their classes it's actually physically swatch, swapping those files right now back onto the building topic so mike keller one of the betaflight developers has a docker betaflight build repository under here there's instructions it talks about docker and how to download and virtual machine essentially what i've walked you through and I, I tried to i went back in and, and did a pull request honestly to add a little bit more information into here to help, you know, it's just some of the stumbling blocks. I it was a fresh set of eyes when you're, you know you're going through this for the first time. So if you have input on making these better too, um, please let me know, or, or better let Mike know. Uh, and you can even do a pull request and, and push the data back across uh, for a practice round. But um, essentially, what I'm talking about here is what this says. Ultimately, this is the run or the build command right here that you would run for beta flight. This information up here talks about the cloning. It's like I said, you could, don't have to use desktop. You can clone it down, pick your list of branches, pick the branch you want, do a pull on that, the current branch that you're set to, and then do this command to build it. I'm a Windows user, so you need to get a little bit more specific and specify the user directory or the path where the uh, clone or is stored on your C drive. And then ultimately, I, I really think that people are going to want to uh, specify their target, not build all the targets, which it takes forever. It takes my computer a good solid day or more to do all the targets. So I really feel like you're going to want to use these optional parameters and put in specific target names. I like, you know, I don't want to have to copy and paste this in or type this in every time. What I like to do is have batch files that can run uh, whatever I need run. So I'm going to go into this Betaflight batch file here. And a batch file, if you've never messed with them, they're very simple. Just right click, hit new. You can make a text file and then just 
call it whatever you want dot batch so just type in uh, class dot bat and then it says hey you change the extension say yeah that's fine and then it's just a simple uh, text file you can right click on and hit edit so I have one up here for beta flight target builds I'm gonna go ahead and hit edit that so if you go to tiny.cc, I'll drop the link below, um, filter calc, there's a directory in there called building with Docker, and you can see all these, beta, and I'm going to be, leave this there, and I change things over time, so, you know, you're, the, the, what you see here might be slightly different, but you'll see what I, like, this is what I actually use to build stuff. So you can copy this, go grab this, obviously you need to change this directory to wherever you have the beta flight so in this example it would be uh, class here and essentially what directory are we mimicking there you can see we're mimicking class right here and actually this isn't on the end so it would be that that essentially just sets a variable that is going to be used down here in this run code. These little col these little colons here, or semicolons, I can't remember, are basically commenting out. So it's not, when it run the batch file, it's not looking at this line of code. It's not looking at this line of code. It's actually running this. So you can see I have different ones here that I, I can run. This one right here, let's just comment this out for now. And then let's enable this one. And in here, this is really, it's, that's pretty simple. It's going to build the SP Racing F3 target. Well, how do you know which target name you want to build? Well, there's a couple. You know, you can go into the the Beta Flight configurator and go look at the target names, or you can just go in here to Doc or Adam and look. And here's the target names as well. Do note that some targets are under some other folders. So those target names, like for the SP Racing F3, for example, if I come down to here, you can see this also builds the Flip 30. Flip 32 F3 OSD is there as well. So you you need to say like where, where I have a flip, I you know that we make that target. Why isn't there a flip 32? You know, it's well it's buried. Essentially the architecture of this board is the same or darn close to to this the SP racing F3. So when you see that you can see the architecture of certain boards are basically exactly the same as the other boards. So you'd put that name in there and I'm just leave it as it is. And I'm gonna save that. I have class set there as well, and if all is well, I'm going to click that. It will open up a command prompt window, invoke the Docker virtual machine that we have started, and it will run a clear to clean out any old files or old builds, and then it will start the make command to start building the SP Racing F3 target. Now, which version of the beta flight branch or code is it doing well it's doing the 3.3.x maintenance edition once it's done building it should pause here and should show you that it has created the hex file in the object beta flight or the object folder if it comes up and you did make code edits to add in other features and it has a you know it basically it didn't create a hex it will have a percentage grid up here and it will show you that it's a hundred over a hundred percent for the flash ROM space and then hence the problem you can see that it was a stack overflow it can't build it because it uh, would take up the, the build you're asking it to do would take up too much ROM space on the board so it just doesn't even make the hex file so that was really nice of them to code that in there so browsing over to our directory here under classes objects you will see the hex file here that you created and you can use the configurator to load local and go ahead and flash that to your board okay in the next video we'll talk about how to actually edit the text and or the code in the configurator and add and remove features uh, from specific targets thanks and i hope this helped